In this tutorial we will discuss the timeout command. This utility allows you to exit a command after it runs for X number of seconds. Timeout is part of the new core utilities that are available on almost any Linux system. It is a fairly simple utility that doesn't have a ton of options. In the following sections we will outline the basic usage, some of its options and of course, show some examples. Using the timeout utility is quite simple. You call timeout, specify the number of seconds you want, then enter the command you want to run. Let's say we wanted to run top on a system to check the running processes. Normally top would run indefinitely until sent the SIG interrupt signal by pressing Ctrl plus C on the keyboard. Using the timeout command we can tell timeout to exit after 5 seconds. There are many different signals you can send to a command. Outlining all of them is outside the scope of this tutorial. Instead we will focus on how to send a specific signal. By default the timeout command sends a SIG term or termination signal. We can specify which signal to send by using the minus S option followed by the desired signal. For example, let's say we wanted to send the SIG interrupt signal to the top command after 5 seconds. We can specify the signal by name or number, like so. Here is an example of using the signal number instead of the name. You can get a list of all of the available signals by using the kill command with the minus L option. Here we see all the signals with their corresponding numbers. SIG interrupt is 2 and SIG term is 15. In the last section we discussed using specific signals with timeout. If you want to know which signal was used you can supply the minus V option. This will print the signal used by timeout to standard error. Here is an example of timeout run without specifying a signal. As mentioned in the previous section, SIGTERM will be used by default. Here we see the verbose output showing SIGTERM was used to terminate the process. In this next example we will instruct the timeout command to use SIG interrupt to terminate the process. The verbose output will indicate that SIG interrupt was used instead of SIG term. Notice the verbose output now shows that the SIG interrupt was used instead of SIG term. Timeout will always exit with status code 124 if the command reaches the time limit and is timed out. If the command completes before the specified time limit, it will return the exit status of the command. You can preserve the exit status of the command by using the preserve status option. This will instruct the timeout utility to use the exit status of the command, even if it times out. Let's look at some examples to better demonstrate how this works. Here we will run the tail command and interrupt it with the Ctrl plus C keyboard combination which sends a SIG interrupt. This will generate an exit code of 130, which means command terminated by pressing Ctrl plus C on the keyboard. Here you can see the exit code was 130. Now we know that if we send SIG interrupt to tail it generates a 130 exit code. Let's tell timeout to send SIG interrupt after 5 seconds and check the exit code. The exit code is 124, this is because we are getting the exit code of timeout, not the command. Remember, if the timeout reaches its time limit it will always return the 124 exit code. If we want the exit code of the command, we must use the preserve status option. Let's run the same command again, this time with the preserve status option.
With the preserve status option set, timeout now sends the exit code of the command, even though the time limit was reached. There are times when a process continues to run even after sending a termination signal. If you have used a Linux system long enough, you probably have seen this before. You run a command, then hit Ctrl plus C to terminate the command and nothing happens. It is frustrating and usually makes the user instantly start mashing Ctrl plus C repeatedly. If the process still doesn't respond most people head for the nuclear kill minus 9 option, also known as SIG kill. The timeout command has a option for such a case. Using the minus K option allows you to send a SIG kill to the process after a set time limit. Let's run an experiment to see how it works. For this example I wrote a small script that uses the trap command to ignore the SIG term signal. This will allow us to demonstrate how the kill after option works. Let's take a look at the script. The script will continue to print running for x seconds to the screen indefinitely if left alone. Let's run it with the timeout command with a 5 second time limit and use the K option to kill it after 10 seconds. Here we see the timeout command issues the SIG term, but the script captured it with trap and ignored it. This is an example of a script not responding to the SIG term signal sent by the timeout command. As instructed, the timeout command sends the SIG kill signal to the process and kills it. Our experiment worked perfectly. The script ran for 5 seconds, then timeout sent the SIG term to terminate it. The script caught the SIG term and ignored it, restarted its counter and kept going. The kill after option was set to 10 seconds, which sent the SIG kill to the script when that time limit was reached, ultimately killing the process. There you have the timeout command. Not only did we learn the basic usage of the timeout command, but we also learned a little about signals. Another interesting tidbit is the fact that you can use trap to ignore signals, something that did not occur to me until I needed to do it. This article was a lot of fun to write. I love experimenting and hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If so, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also visit putorious.net to subscribe to our monthly newsletter and read a text version of this tutorial.